Dear students, today I have come up with a video of ICC 10th Standard Chemistry, Chapter Number 2, Chemical Bonding. We are going to discuss some important questions from this chapter. My name is Arpita Banerjee and you are watching Arpita Classes. Let's get started. The first question is, state the type of bonding in the following molecules. You have been given water, calcium oxide, hydroxyl ion, methane, ammonium ion and ammonium chloride. So we need to just take the type of bonding. This is a one mark question but let us discuss in detail. First molecule is water. So let us see the structure of water. Water is this. There are two lone pair on oxygen molecule. Right? So this is covalent bonding. We can see there is a covalent bonding between hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen atomic number is 1. So hydrogen has only one electron in its outer motion. I am showing it by cross. Another hydrogen also I am showing it by cross. Oxygen atomic number is 8. So the electronic configuration of oxygen is 2.6. So oxygen is with 6 electrons in its outer motion, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. I am showing the electrons of oxygen with dot. So hydrogen has to complete its duplet. So it is taking one electron from oxygen. This hydrogen is also taking one electron from oxygen. And oxygen has to complete its octet. So oxygen will be taking two electrons from both hydrogen. So we can see here there is a covalent bond and here there is a covalent bond and these two electron pairs which have not taken part in the bond formation they are called as lone pair of electrons right. Also there is a lot of electronegativity difference between hydrogen and oxygen therefore this covalent bond is a polar covalent bond. So the answer of this question will be polar covalent bond. So there is a polar covalent bond present between hydrogen and oxygen in water molecule. Let us see the next compound that is calcium oxide. We know calcium is a metal, oxygen is a non-metal. So there is a large electronegativity difference between calcium and oxygen. Therefore the bond will be definitely an electrovalent bond or an ionic bond. So, calcium atomic number is 20. Therefore, electronic configuration would be 2, 8, 8 and 2. Calcium with its 2 electron in its outermost shell. Oxygen, as we saw, atomic number 8. So, the electronic configuration is 2 and 6. So, oxygen with its 6 electrons in its outermost shell. Calcium has to get its octet, so it will be losing two electrons. So electrons from calcium is completely transferred to the orbital of oxygen. This was 2, 8, 8, 2 and this was 2, 6. In the next state, calcium will become 2 plus 2, 8, 8. Oxygen will become 2 minus with two electrons of calcium. So it will become 2, 8. And finally, there will be an electrovalent bond between calcium and oxygen. So the answer for the second question is, second molecule is electrovalent or ionic bond. You just have to state the type of bonding but I am explaining over here. Okay. Next molecule. Let us see the next molecule which is your hydroxyl ion. So now hydroxyl ion, the structure of hydroxyl ion is OH minus. If we draw it properly, it will be like OH and there is a minus sign on the oxygen atom. Okay. So this is like there is a single covalent bond. Simply because oxygen and hydrogen both are non-metals, there is hardly any electronegativity difference. We will go for there is electronegativity difference but still they will go for covalent bond because hydrogen cannot afford to lose its one electron. It has to get duplet uh, configuration therefore it will be going for sharing of electrons. Okay, So it is a covalent bond with a 
negative charge on oxygen atom right let us see the next molecule that is your methane the formula chemical formula for methane is ch4 the structure is this this is purely covalent bond we can understand because all the hydrogen has to complete their duplet and carbon has to complete its octet so they will go for sharing of electrons we can draw the draw the electron dot diagram this is hydrogen's electrons i'm showing it by cross carbon's electronic configuration is 2 4 so there are four electrons in its outermost shell i'm showing showing it by uh, dot all the hydrogens are completing their duplet like this and carbon will be completing its octet by taking an electron from each hydrogen therefore the bond is like this so it is again covalent bond for methane molecule right let us go for the next molecule that is ammonium ion ammonium ion the chemical formula for ammonium ion is n H four plus. Let us see the structure. It is nitrogen is a central metal atom. One hydrogen here, one hydrogen here, one hydrogen here, and one hydrogen here with a positive charge on the nitrogen atom. Now, how this is forming? Every hydrogen is with its or one electron. I am showing the electrons of hydrogen with cross. And we know nitrogen's electronic configuration is two. Five. So there are five electrons in its outermost shell. One, two, three, four, and five. Right. Now hydrogens will be completing its duplet. So all the hydrogens are taking one one electron from nitrogen. And so these are three single covalent bonds. And these two electrons. Are given to this H plus. This is basically H plus because NH three is made up of NH four plus is made up of NH three plus H plus. So this this hydrogen is devoid of electron. This doesn't have any electron. So these two electrons has been given to this hydrogen, right? And because of that, you get a dative bond over here. So these are the three covalent bond, and this is your dative bond. and this entire molecule has got a positive charge so in ammonium ion there are covalent bond and coordinate bond present okay now let us see the last molecule that is ammonium chloride ammonium chloride so ammonium chloride chemical formula is nh4cl we have just seen the formation of ammonium ion so ammonium ion is nh4 plus and chloride ion is cl minus so definitely there will be an electrovalent bond in ammonium ion we have already seen there are covalent bond and coordinate bond and between ammonium ion and chlorine ion there will be an ionic bond so in this molecule there are covalent bonds okay coordinate bond also and electrovalent bond also so this the question can come this way also that state a molecule or name a molecule which has or name a compound which has all the three bonds present in it so the answer will be ammonium chloride here we have covalent bond coordinate bond and electrovalent bond as well let's start with the second question is in give two examples in each case coordinate bond compounds two examples of coordinate bond compounds this will be number 1 will be ammonium ion ammonium ion you can write down the formula also nh4 plus and the second one is hydronium ion hydronium ion the formula is h3o plus Okay, so the two coordinate bond compounds are ammonium ion and hydronium ion. Second question is solid covalent compounds. Solid covalent compounds you can give example of phosphorus, 
पेंटाक्लोराइड फॉस्फोरस पेंटाक्लोराइड दैट इज पी सी एल फाइव एंड द सेकेंड एग्जाम्पल यू कैन गिव डायमंड दिस इज द सेकेंड एग्जाम्पल डायमंड आई होप एवरी वन कैन सी द बोर्ड प्रॉपरली डायमंड द सेकेंड एग्जाम्पल इज डायमंड Next is gaseous polar compounds. Gaseous polar compound. The first one is hydrogen chloride gas. That is your HCl. Second, we can give example of ammonia gas. That is NH three. Okay. Fourth one, gaseous non-polar compounds. Gaseous non-polar compounds. There are many. One we can write oxygen, which is non-polar. Another we can write nitrogen, which is again non-polar. Liquid non-polar compounds. Liquid non-polar compounds we can give example of benzene, that is C six H six. Hexane, that is C six H twelve. There are many we can give these two examples. This is the second. So in the third question, we need to complete this table. Formula of chloride. The elements are sodium, phosphorus, and carbon. You have to write the formula of chloride. So sodium, the chloride of sodium will be NaCl. The chloride of phosphorus. There are two chlorides possible: phosphorus trichloride and phosphorus pentachloride. And the chloride of carbon is carbon tetrachloride (CCl4). Next is formula of chloride. Oh, I have written it two times. Sorry. Next is nature of bonding. So NaCl, we can see one is electropositive, one is electronegative. Sodium is metal, chlorine is non-metal. So definitely the bonding will be electrovalent bond. So this bond is electrovalent bond. PCl3, both are non-metal. So the bonding will be covalent here. Covalent bond. CCl4 again both are non-metal. The bonding will be covalent bond. Next question is the physical state of chloride. Now you do not know this. You are not supposed to know this, but some few things we need to remember. So uh, NaCl is a solid. Okay. Uh, phosphorus pentachloride is also solid, and uh, carbon tetrachloride is a liquid. So we are done with the third question. Let's start with the fourth question now. Electrons are getting added to an element Y. Is Y getting oxidized or reduced? So we know that addition of electron or gain of electron is known as reduction. Okay. So if electrons are getting added to Y. Y gets reduced. So first answer will be Y gets reduced. Okay. Now what charge will Y migrate to during the process of electrolysis? So if electrons are getting added to Y, what will be the charge of Y? Y will contain a negative charge. And if it contains a negative charge, then definitely it will migrate towards a positively charged electrode. So the answer will be what charge will Y migrate to? Y Will migrate to positive charge, positive charge during electrolysis. Okay, since Y contains a negative charge, so definitely it will migrate towards a positively charged electrode, and the positively charged electrode is called as anode. So basically, it will be migrating towards the anode. But the question is which? What charge will Y migrate to? So we have to answer Y will migrate to the positive charge. Okay. Next is acid dissolves in water and produces positively charged ion. Draw the structure of this positively charged ion. So if you see uh, any acid, if you take HCl, when it is dissolved in water, it produces H3O plus and Cl minus, right? So we have to draw the structure of H3O plus, which we have done before also. Let us draw one more time. This is hydrogen with one electron, hydrogen with one electron, this hydrogen with no electron. 
This is one electron of oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is the structure of your hydronium ion, right? Next is explain why carbon tetrachloride does not dissolve in water. So carbon tetrachloride is a non-polar compound, and we know that polar compounds dissolve in polar solvent, non-polar compounds dissolve in non-polar solvents. Water being a polar solvent will not be able to dissolve carbon tetrachloride. So we will write it here that uh, carbon tetrachloride CCl4 is a non-polar compound and is not dissolved and does not dissolve and does not dissolve in water as water is a polar solvent. Let's start with the fifth question now. In the formation of magnesium chloride by a direct combination between magnesium and chloride, name the substance that is oxidized and the substance that is reduced. So we know that loss of electron is oxidation and gain of electron is reduction. So in the formation of magnesium chloride, magnesium will be losing two electron to convert into Mg2+. Because we all know that electronic configuration is 282. So after losing two electron, it will become 28. Okay, so this is loss of electron, which is oxidation. This process is called as oxidation. So the substance which is oxidized is magnesium. So we will write the answer as magnesium is oxidized. We will only write this magnesium is oxidized. Okay. On the other hand, there are two Cl which will be taking this two chlorine to convert into two Cl minus. Because the electronic configuration of chlorine is 287, after taking one electron it will become 288. So the gain of electron is taking place in case of chlorine which is called as reduction. So we will write the answer as chloride ion is reduced. So magnesium is uh, oxidized and chloride ion is reduced. Let us come to the next question, next part of this question. What are the terms defined below? A bond formed by a shared pair of electrons, each bonding atom contributes one electron to the pair. So bond is forming by a shared pair of electrons. Suppose A and B is forming one bond, okay, and each electron is contributed by uh, the pair. Each bonding atom, each bonding atom contributes one electron to the pair. That means it is a covalent bond. This type of bonds are called as covalent bond. Okay. So the next question: A bond formed by a shared pair of electrons with bond with both electrons coming from the same atom. So if there is a bond formed between A and B, but both the electrons are coming from the same atom, this type of bonding is called as coordinate bond. Coordinate or the other name is dative bond. Let's proceed with the next question, question number 6. Draw the structural formula of carbon tetrachloride and state the type of bonding present in it. So structural formula of carbon tetrachloride, structural formula of carbon tetrachloride is CCl4. So it will be the central atom is C and there are four chlorine atoms attached to it. Very clearly the type of bonding is covalent bonding over here. As carbon has four electrons in its outermost shell, I'm showing it by cross. Chlorine, all the chlorines have seven electrons in their outermost shell. This is one chlorine, another chlorine, the third chlorine and the fourth chlorine. All of them are having seven electrons in their outermost shell. So to complete the octet, all the chlorines will be taking one electron from carbon. Each chlorine will be taking one electron from carbon and carbon has four electrons, it needs another four electrons which will be taken from each chlorine like this. So clearly the bond is a covalent bond. State the type of bond present in it. Single, we can mention single covalent bond. 
All the bonds are single covalent bonds. So single covalent bond is present here. Question number seven. There are three elements E, F and G with atomic numbers 19, 8 and 17 respectively. If the molecular formula of the compound form between E and G and seek a type of chemical bond in this compound. So now in this type of question we do not have to mention what the element is. We have to uh, give them the name as it is given in the question. Okay, So don't worry that we have to say 19 is potassium and all that. No, we don't have to do it. Okay. So basically, uh, if we write the electronic configuration, we'll get to know the answer. E, the atomic number of E is uh, 19. Atomic number is 19. Therefore, the electronic configuration of E is 2, 8, 8 and 1. Okay. F is atomic number 8. That means the electronic configuration is 2, 6. Right? And G atomic number is 17. So the electronic configuration is 2, 8 and 7. They are saying if the molecular formula of the compound form between E and G. So we can see E is a metal. It has only one electron in its outermost shell. And G is a non-metal which is having 7 electrons in its outermost shell. So we have to write down the molecular formula. So obviously the valency of E Valency of E is 1 and also valency of G is 1. So the molecular formula of E and G will be EG. Okay. So molecular formula, we just have to write only this much. This is for the explanation part. Don't have to mention it in the answer. We just have to write this one. Molecular formula of the compound, of the compound formed between E and G is, E and G is, E, G, that's all. E is a metal, so obviously we'll put E first and G, E, G. Next is, let's say the type of bonding, chemical bond in this compound. Definitely it will be electrovalent bonding. The bonding present, the bonding present in E, G is electrovalent or ionic that's all. Let us start with the next question. The following table shows the electronic configuration of the elements W, X, Y, and Z. So the electronic configurations are given. Answer the following questions based on the table above. What type of bond is formed between Y, W, and X? Between W and X. So here I am solving it here. W and X. So W, you can see it is a metal with valency 1. W is a metal with valency 1. And X is a non-metal with valency 1. X is a non-metal with valency 1. So the first answer will be, the, the formula will be Wx. So the formula of this will be Wx. Next is Y and Z. This is it, sorry. Y and Z. So Y is a non-metal with uh, 3 valency and Z is a non-metal. This is hydrogen we can understand with 1 valency. So Y has 3 valency and Z has 1 valency. So the formula will be, we draw the formula like this in crisscross manner. So it will be Y1, Z3 that is Y, Z3. This is the formula, Y, Z3. So the next question, what is the formula between X and Z? So X is again a non-metal with valency 1. So I'll write X over here. And Z is also a non-metal with valency 1. So the formula will be Zx. Why did I take Z first? Because I understand that Z uh, means it is hydrogen and this is a halide, any halogen. So it is chlorine basically. So it is HCl type. So I wrote Zx. Okay. Next one is W and X. So W is having formula uh, valency 1, sorry, and X is having valency 1. Achha. So W and X is already given before. So again the formula will be Wx. So this type of questions will be asked from this chapter chemical bonding. I have taken only the application based questions. Apart from this there are definitions which you need to prepare. So you need to prepare the definition of electrovalent bond, electrovalency, covalent bond, covalency, the conditions for formation of electrovalent bond, conditions for formation of covalent bond, the definition for dative bond, 
okay and then there are differences between electrovalent bond and uh, electrovalent compound and covalent compound so this type of theory questions also you have to prepare so that is it for today let's meet in the next video stay tuned thank you so much